Good afternoon and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. We're so pleased you could join us for our Christian Leadership Lecture Series designed to help businessmen and women integrate their faith at work so God will be glorified and his kingdom expanded. If this is the first time you've been to one of our events, we welcome you. If you're a repeat attender, welcome as well. We started these events two years ago, and through the blessing of God, we've had over 5,500 men and women participate in our lunches. So, and this one is sold out. Thank you so much. You know, at Concordia University, we are both uh, intentional and deliberate in teaching our students to integrate their faith and their life. And so this program today is, a, is an extension of that, with our audience being the business community, but we do have faculty and students here, so we welcome you so very, very much. And I know I, like many of you, attend lots of luncheons, but our lunch today is a little different, because we're going to talk about God and the marketplace and what he's doing to shape the lives and to use us as his ambassadors. If you are concentrated on alerting people to the fact that you have a gospel of good news and that you believe it, and that Jesus walks with you, and to do so explicitly, you may make mistakes, and you may fail, but it will not be in such a way as to be disastrous. If you are playing offense, you will not find yourself on defense. If you are telling the big story, the most important story, the story that will define your eternal life and your infinite success, you will not be explaining what went wrong in your life. People around us have an inalienable right to know what it means to believe in and trust God with our lives. People are watching all of the time and integrity is an essential part of living out our faith on the job. Another major impact was a person that some of you know very well, Carl W. Berner, Sr., very much involved in the formative years of Concordia University. He has a booklet, Teardrops to Diamonds, which Gene brought out to me last week in preparing for this event. And I read through that again. And he said a few things in there. He referred to four pillars, and two or three of them are embedded in the following statement. I am here by God's appointment. I am in God's keeping and God's time. So when we look at things that way, we then realize a different viewpoint about ourselves and our, and our relatives, relative role. I'm a big believer that God did not intend for us to merely endure our work, but God intended for us to engage in our work as a gift and a vocation and as a profound opportunity to participate in what we do for a living and in God's creation. But I want to say to all of you that are here, if you'll allow me what we used to say in Congress, a point of personal privilege, um, if you are supporters of Concordia, thank you. You need to support them more. And if you are not a supporter of Concordia, you need to become one. Because there are very few institutions in America that are teaching and training up young students, not only to become godly young people, to become patriots. You put Jesus in the center, man, he does the marketing, he does the sales, he does the organizing. But if you keep him under a rock, he's not pushy. And that's the same way with us as leaders. And so what he really says is you got to tell your people where you're going. And you got to have a set of operating values so that can guide people's behavior. I really have, I think, uh, you know, learned to reprioritize my life. And, you know, for me, it's all about God and family. And I am uh, extraordinarily blessed, uh, have had uh, business successes that are, you know, uh, you know, incredibly uh, positive, and yet the only thing that matters to me today uh, in all seriousness is, is being as, as, as good and as effective a Christian role model as I can be. See, that's what you want, is you want core values that everybody can understand, and you can't handle more than three or four, and they got to be rank order, because life is about value conflicts, because you can't seek the kingdom and seek man's approval at the same time. They're in conflict. You can't do both of them. Anyone who encountered Jesus, whether it was the woman at the well, and I would invite you to time that dialogue, 
how many sentences did they exchange before her life was transformed? Or Pilate trying to wash his hands of this phenomenon. He was, it was bigger than him. He didn't know how to get rid of it. Transformation. Nobody was the same after encountering this person, Jesus Christ. How are people after they encounter you? I believe that we live at a time when God has set the stage for us to accomplish magnificent things. And I want it said of me, and I want it said of you, what was said of David in Acts 13, 36, that he did God's will for his generation and departed to be with his fathers. Let's live large to the glory of God. It's an honor to be with you this morning. Let's pray for the best of our nation, and then let's go live the heroic lives to which we're called. God bless you. So you decide at that point at 23, what do you want people to say about you? Boss? CEO? Servant leader? Manager of human capital? Lover of people? Millionaire? Follower of Jesus Christ? I've made my decision. What's yours? Thanks.